Hello, let's talk about hormonal lab testing. So you thought it could be your hormones, the low mood, the torch energy, the non-existent libido, and that thing with your periods where they're, they've become heavy and painful, or maybe your mood just tends to get worse before your period, and you're wondering if your hormones could be the cause. But your doctor already tested your hormones, and she said that everything looked fine or she just didn't call you back. And that was the end of that. Or was it? So WNL stands for within normal limits. And, and this is a, a reference to blood markers being in the normal range. It also means that there's nothing wrong with you. And it might mean that you're just told um, that you're just getting older. This was told actually to a friend of mine who was 27. Stressed, that's a big one. Maybe in need of an antidepressant, Let, let's just try one. Could be your mood. Perimenopausal. Uh, this was uh, actually said to one of my patients who was in her 30s at the time. Or my favorite, you're fine. You're just fine. But yeah, you're, you're not just fine. No, no, you're not just fine. Because you deserve to feel stellar. Uh, you deserve to wake up with energy and to be excited for the day to start and to slide through the day with enthusiasm and you deserve to be in a good mood most of the time and to feel physically, mentally, and emotionally stable most of the time, right? So if you're not feeling this way, why isn't anything showing up in your lab testing? Well, WNL also happens to stand for, we're not looking. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, I used to kind of um, roll my eyes when, when people would say things like, well, my blood work looks normal. But now I keep my eyes still. <laughs> I do not roll them anymore. And, and I actually, I, I educate now uh, because people really just don't know. And there are, so, there are so many things we can test for in your blood. You, you have a lot of hormones, you have a lot of nutrients that all circulate in your bloodstream. But there are actually quite a lot of things that we can't really test for in blood or that don't give us an accurate reading of our cellular levels. And therefore, um, you know, it, it's not clinically useful. And this includes things like magnesium, zinc, calcium, or other, um, other minerals. But when it comes to blood tests, especially hormonal blood tests, a lot of factors matter. So what matters are what hormones are tested. So are we looking below the hood or are we just doing basic preliminary testing? What time of your cycle are we testing your hormones? Because they ebb and flow throughout the course of the month. What time of day are we testing? Are you fasted or are you fed? What are the reference ranges we're looking at? So are we just ruling out disease? Because that's important for sure, but we're also looking for health, uh, not just the absence of disease. And we're also looking at the relationship between the hormones. So doing some calculations to examine certain ratios. So here's a list of things I regularly test in my practice and some of the further interpretation I do with those results as well as, as some of the common imbalances that I see. So sometimes this is referred to as functional testing because we're not looking at whether you have a disease per se, we're looking at how your body is functioning so that we can optimize how you feel. So one of the things that I like to lead with or one of the most important things I test for are the sex hormones. So these are things like your FSH, your LH, your progesterone, estradiol, testosterone, your morning cortisol, and a hormone called DHEAS. So FSH and LH are made in the brain. They can be elevated in menopause or perimenopause, and they can be low in conditions where you're not ovulating, such as hypothalamic amenorrhea. An LH to FSH ratio above two can also tell us if you may be at risk or you might have PCOS. I test progesterone and estradiol on day 21 of a 28 day cycle, so a week before uh, the, your next expected period, and I observe the relationship between these two hormones in your luteal phase. And so many hormonal conditions, anything from heavy periods to mood swings before your period to hormonal acne, PMS, and PMDD can be related to a low progesterone to estradiol ratio, which is something that we sometimes call estrogen dominance. And so testing for both these hormones during this time of your cycle will tell us if your progesterone to estradiol ratio is too low um, or your progesterone is too low, your estradiol is too high or both. And so if the progesterone to estradiol ratio is low and progesterone levels are optimal, we work with bringing down estrogen. And this involves supporting the liver, methylation, and estrogen detox pathways. 
if your progesterone is low, this could indicate that you're either not ovulating uh, properly or that your body's in a state of stress and uh, making cortisol instead of progesterone. So these two markers, when tested uh, on day 21, give or take, of a 28-day cycle, give us a ton of information to play with about how your hormones are working. Early morning cortisol is also really helpful. It can tell us a little bit about our stress burden. And testosterone and DHEAS are two uh, androgens, male hormones, that can tell us about the health of the adrenal glands and if we're making too many male hormones or not clearing them efficiently enough, which can cause things like acne, hair loss, um, and, and mood swings and things like that. Thyroid hormones are also incredibly important when it comes to mental health, uh, especially depression. And a thyroid panel that I will order consists of TSH, free T3, free T4, reverse T3, and antithyroid antibodies. So TSH is thyroid stimulating hormone, and it's the primary marker used to detect hypo or hyperthyroidism. It's a chemical made by the pituitary gland in the brain that tells the thyroid, uh, which stimulates the thyroid, to make thyroid hormones, uh, which are called T3 and T4. And so it's a great preliminary marker, uh, but it doesn't tell us what's going below the surface in the actual thyroid gland. So there are a lot of calculations that I will play around with regarding the thyroid panel. Um, so first of all, we'll look at reference ranges, which are narrower than what shows up in, in regular blood work, because we want to optimize your thyroid. I'll look at things like the T4 to T3 ratio, which tells us if your T4 is being converted properly to T3, and T3 is our active thyroid hormone. And I'll look at the free T3 to reverse T3 ratio, which tells us if your metabolism is shutting down in response to stress or starvation. And uh, the, the free T3 to reverse T3 ratio can tell us if certain lifestyle implementations like the ketogenic diet or intermittent fasting are working for you or working against you. Uh, one of the most common causes of underactive thyroid is Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is an autoimmune thyroid condition, and it's characterized by elevated antithyroid antibodies. So we measure those so that we know if we need to direct treatment to the immune system rather than just general thyroid support. So this helps guide our therapies. And it's also important, like I like to look at metabolic hormones and markers um, that are useful for understanding our nutrient status. So things like fasting insulin, fasting blood glucose, HbA1c, and a cholesterol panel all tell us a lot of really good information. So HbA1c is your measure of blood sugar uh, over two to three months, so the, the trend, and it's used as the main marker to detect diabetes or prediabetes and blood sugar control. I order fasting blood sugar along with fasting insulin to detect insulin resistance, uh, which is a condition that can cause a host of symptoms from low energy to weight gain to hormonal imbalances and low mood and the hangries, the, the hypoglycemic crashes sometimes. And blood sugar imbalance is one of the leading reasons you might be stuck in anxiety. Um, it's one of the main things I see. And there's gonna be more on that in other videos or other posts. So those two markers can detect if we're at risk for type two diabetes. So using fasting insulin and fasting glucose, I can calculate HOMA IR, which is an insulin resistance marker. And cholesterol, a cholesterol panel is also super important. Um, so we know about cholesterol in the context of heart disease, but even if you're not at risk of developing heart disease because maybe you're young or a woman and a non-smoker, I still order cholesterol because low cholesterol can sometimes be a problem for women, particularly women who suffer from mood disorders or hormonal imbalances. And so cholesterol makes up our cell membranes, which are incredibly important for brain function. Low cholesterol is associated with irritability, aggression, and cognitive issues. And we also need cholesterol to make all of our sex hormones. So all of them, progesterone, estradiol, cortisol, testosterone, they all start off as a cholesterol molecule, even vitamin D actually. Cholesterol can also tell us about the quality of your diet and if your diet's working for you. So if you consume a lot of good fats, you tend to have higher HDL, which is good cholesterol. And if you consume a lot of refined carbs and sugars, you may end up with high triglycerides. And if, you know, if your diet has a lot of fried fats or like corn oil, you may end up with um, high total cholesterol or high LDL. And not all nutrients can be accurately tested in the blood, but, but there are some you can test for. And um, so I'll look at a CBC, vitamin B12, sometimes homocysteine, which can give us some more information about B12 folate and vitamin D and ferritin, which is iron. 
Um, so CBC stands for complete blood count. It's ordered in virtually every blood test a doctor orders because it shows us what's going on with your red blood cells, your white blood cells, and your platelets. So it tells us about the function of your immune system and it can raise a red flag about certain nutrient deficiencies like folate, B12, B6, and iron. And it can tell us if you have anemia. Um, we can also test uh, you know, certain nutrients like vitamin D, ferritin, which is, which is an iron storage protein, and B12. And so these nutrients can give us a sense of if nutrient deficiencies are causing low energy, low mood, low immune function, or other symptoms. And uh, it's also good to look at inflammatory markers, so something like CRP, C-reactive protein, or ESR and homocysteine. Um, because inflammation is one of the root causes of brain fog and physical aches and pains and all mood conditions from depression to bipolar to OCD. So CRP and ESR, which stands for erythrocyte sedimentation rate, are just really general inflammatory markers. They don't tell us where the inflammation is coming from. Uh, they also may, may fail to detect the very low levels of inflammation in the brain um, if you're depressed uh, or have low energy. But they can still give us a general idea about the infl inflammation levels in your body and, and help us uh, detect you know, if things are improving. So obviously all of this testing is not free. So it, I calculated them all, uh, the cost of, of what it would cost to order all of them, and it's about 250 Canadian dollars. So this means I don't order all these tests with every single patient I see, um, because I believe in only ordering tests that are gonna influence the treatment plan. So if I'm gonna suggest digestion or liver support or tell you to consume healthy fats, then we may not, not need to pay for the testing to justify these protocols. But it can be extremely useful to work with testing to help us do the detective work and find out the root cause of symptoms or even just to establish a baseline so we can see if the treatment plan is working and based on how the markers are changing along with the change in symptoms. And a lot of the time people ask me about a specialized testing and uh, so naturopaths can order a bunch of different things and some of the things I've found useful are the Dutch test which looks at urinary hormone metabolites, the oat test or organic acids test which looks at urinary metabolites of nutrients, neurotransmitters, bacteria and yeast, and mitochondrial products, and gut stool culture, which is super useful, which looks at bacteria, yeast, and parasites, as well as other gut markers in your stool, in your poop. But the drawback of all these tests is that they're pretty expensive and they range from about 300 to 500 bucks per test. So hopefully that clears up some of the confusion around lab testing and hormonal testing. I know there is a lot of confusion. So let me know if you have any thoughts or questions about that and let me know if you have an experience where functional lab testing helped you understand where your symptoms were coming from. Or let me know if you've had the experience where you've gone to your doctor asking to get your hormones tested and were told everything's fine. Alright, take care.